We ready to rock and roll? <laughs> All right. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. For everyone on the call today, welcome to our composer webinar, Create Tech Creating Technical Documentation Like a Pro. The captain of our ship to my left is good friend and senior technical consultant John Nolan. I am his sidekick, uh, senior sales rep Chris Costa. We are solid experts, part of the solid experience group. Uh, for those who know us, um, hello again. For those who are not that familiar with us, we are a value-added reseller of the full suite of SolidWorks products, uh, from Composer to PDM to anything that's cloud-based within the 3D experience platform. Um, for this webinar, we encourage it to be interactive. I will put my email address in the chat uh, for any current or future questions. So, but please, we strongly encourage you to um, participate uh, within the content. And if you have any questions, uh, I will monitor that for John and he will answer any of those questions throughout the course of the presentation. So without further ado, I'll stop talking. You didn't come here to uh, listen to me, that's for sure. I will uh, introduce John. Take it away. Good afternoon, everyone. Technical documentation is, is kind of the focus of this afternoon's presentation. And this is a broad overview of the SOLIDWORKS Composer product. Um, there's all sorts of reasons for needing better technical documentation, be it assembly instructions, product, literature, and what have you. The nice thing about Composer and what makes it really advantageous for any of our customers and even um, customers of, of competing software products is it takes very good use of your existing CAD geometry, making use of the solid body information that you have for your engineering work and better applying it to your internal or external uh, product documentation. Cute little uh, amusing scenario of what happens when you don't have good documentation. Hey, Mitch, it's Ron Fritz. That's not the way it looks in the instructions, Harold. Uh, that's part B2. Where's A5? <laughs> <laughs> sort of IKEA manual <laughs> gone wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> which are the parts and which are the tools? <laughs> and ready? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously that's not the sort of impression or experience you want for your customers right um, so as Chris mentioned uh, we're solid experience group uh, some customers will know us as solid experts from the past uh, we've gone through a rebranding in the past year and um, as Chris mentioned I'm the senior application engineer here for the Nashua office Chris is one of our account managers. We've actually been involved with each other um, through the SOLIDWORKS community for <clears throat> multiple years. Multiple years. A long time. All right. <laughs> um, speaking of multiple years, the Composer product has gone by a few different names. And it was originally uh, referred to as 3D Via Composer. And now is that was an old branding scheme and now it's actually subdivided as the two main CAD for platforms that it's supporting, both SOLIDWORKS and CATIA. Um, so we have variations of both, and through the Expo Solid Experience group, we actually sell uh, through both networks. However, given that point, SOLIDWORKS Composer can, in fact, with the power of SOLIDWORKS behind it, read in any geometry file, um, step files, Pro E files, it's not exclusive to uh, SOLIDWORKS generated only um, mechanical content. 
I mean, all kinds of documentation needs to be created either internally within the firm to help get things assembled, um, but also externally. So your various assembly guides, you know, have somebody kit up the parts and, and start building up the basic sub-assemblies or having a subcontractor make some of your pieces. An installation guide. So when I go out and do field service on a metal printing system, I have a very extensive installation guide that I follow to properly install the machinery. Um, user manual for the customers that buy a metal printing system, right? Fully documented manual, how to operate the equipment after I've left the site, right? Parts catalog, right? Either online or in print of how do you get that replacement belt, filter, whatever, which part number is it? Um, it's a lot easier with a, a catalog or something to refer to than just a description over the phone. Ongoing maintenance manuals. You know, many of our uh, hardware products on, on the 3D printing side require ongoing maintenance to keep them in good shape. You know, how do you change the belts? How do you tension a belt? That sort of thing. And of course, just basic assembly animation. Um, if you can illustrate something with a picture or an animation, that's a lot less text to have on a page, even a web page, and less translation. I mean, pictures worth a thousand words, you can do with a lot less text with a good quality picture or video. Typically, when we have an engineering uh, project of some sort to launch a new product, there's multiple stages that goes through. And this is sometimes why documentation lags is the tech writing people or the illustrative people, they really wanna wait until the design is, is nearly finished, if not finished. Um, particularly if they're using like digital pictures and stuff, they need to see a physical product. Um, however, the design itself might change. So again, if you try to start the documentation too early, you end up having to redo it or toss it out and do over again and so forth. Or worse, you just don't, right? You either produce documentation that's wrong. Uh, interesting little kind of example here, right? This is very much a label from a product I bought. Big yellow warning label right on the box. Please don't return our product. What's in the box is what you actually bought. The manual is not correct and the pictures that you purchased it from are not correct. And of course, my initial impression when seeing that is like, now I'm questioning the quality of what I just purchased. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so again, poor quality documentation can almost be worse than none at all. But another aspect of all this, and one of the reasons for having Composer as its own individual software piece, is the right level of detail. Um, you know, looking here at, at the various maps, all the same neighborhood, right? but there is a proper level of detail that fits the situation. And actually I have this scenario uh, this weekend going into Boston to, to meet some uh, in-laws at a North End restaurant. How do I get from my home to the tea station, to the restaurant, which stop do I need to get at and so forth. It's a lot harder to find than you think as to what stops I need to make and what turns, where do I get off the trains, right? Similarly with the CAD, right? Having the right illustrative image of a mechanical product at the right level of detail for the specific step that you're at makes a big difference. Right? In, you know, even in this case, here's the full SOLIDWORKS assembly of a um, automated replacement lower leg system. And for me, the engineer, this is beautiful. This is wonderful. I, this is what I like to see. The end customer might be a little intimidated by this, quite frankly, right? So again, the proper level of detail to the end user makes all the difference in the world. Who remembers the old McDonald's songs, right? To all beef patties, special sauce, right? And here again, just an exploded view of everything mundane as a hamburger makes it all you can't all afford to be making jingles of our how to assemble <laughs> lot <of> products. <laughs> yeah. 
similarly poor illustrations, right? An artist looks at a product, tries to replicate it faithfully, but you know, we've got some optical illusion type stuff going on here. Right? And again, this could almost be worse than having a digital picture in this case. Um, proper hand-drawn technical illustration, uh, even with computer software, is a, is a, a real skill set. It's an art, artistic technique. Um, similarly, what most firms do, and, and most people with products do, resort to actual digital pictures, right? Or the other thing is, in some cases, dozens and dozens of YouTube videos, how to install the brakes in my car. Now, what sort of impression does this make for your company, your customers? You know, just individual digital pictures labeled with numbers, right? There's no parts list. It's, it's really hard to judge from a digital picture what's the overall context of an assembly. Right? Uh, what's the tool, what's the part, right? Separating all that stuff out. some distracting little stains and stuff in the image and stuff. If you don't have a clean studio that you're shooting this in, right? You're actually shooting things on the, on the production floor. Um, and then just not write warnings. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> don't break the product doing that. Um, conversely, when using Composer, we can very much take advantage of the CAD geometry, put it within a proper documentation package container, PowerPoint, website, office document, however you want to distribute it to the end person. And with proper illustrations, again, with the right level of detail for the step that you're at. Again, proper illustration, just avoiding the unnecessary wordiness. Um, you know, poorly done, can be worse. Here's just a, an illustration of taking all the elements, both from Composer, our rendering products, your office publishing suites and so forth, and putting it in together in a piece of technical documentation that has the complete story, has all the aspects an in-person needs. There are a various levels of Composer. When you buy SOLIDWORKS Composer, you do in fact get uh, two pieces of software. One is the actual authoring tool itself. The second piece is a player program, kind of like eDrawings, but for Composer. And you can install this on any um, basically Windows-based device, could even be a tablet. And uh, there are customers out in the world that basically that's how they do their paperless factory floors. They run uh, touchscreen tablets out on the factory floor looking at Composer Player. There's an enterprise version for syncing of uh, different data to and from the cloud. And Composer Check adds some uh, physics and mathematical uh, capabilities onto the, uh, the base product. You know, this is the old sort of, of technical documentation we used to have, right? You know, the old Sears style exploded view with the labels and so forth. Remember the uh, um, erector set type build instructions, how to, how to build with something in oh, yeah. an erector set kit or mechanical. Um, for a quick look at, again, our adaptive foot, here's what it looks like in a composer document. And composer is kind of a documentation environment we can pull in the CAD geometry, create views of different key moments that we want to illustrate further down the road, complete with explodes, labels, colored highlighting. Each individual item in here has specific, not only 3D properties, but graphical display properties that we can adjust for highlighting colors, textures, appearances, whatever. We can annotate explode views with labels and even show different configurations of products, um, different tread designs in this case for the, for the base of the uh, adaptive foot. 
And as a little basic side effect, there's video capability built in here as well. And so it's a very easy thing to get a product video just from having a few sequences of keyframes. Right? Anyone who's done an animation knows the concept of keyframe building. Here we have a separate authoring tool. Right? And after having used that composer storyboard to publish certain images, we can go ahead and start applying these things into our finished document. And these things can be adjusted. And with the proper techniques linked to, to, to the composer publications, those in turn can be synced to the CAD geometry and updated as the design updates. So it's not fully automatic, but it can be adjusted as the design improves, rather than putting a label on the outside of the box. <laughs> it says, please pardon the indirect documentation. One of the illustrations that I have from my past experience, um, I used to do space science solar physics instruments. And so here's a you know, fairly typical assembly procedure we have to document what we're doing for NASA. And it starts out with some general screen grabs. But then we start processing through. And yeah, at some points I'm resorting to digital pictures with plastic footed prototypes to ask, have, act as um, staging, right? And a picture and so forth. Um, and then it just, you know, the quality of that. Now, fortunately in that case, it was a very limited audience but it would have been so much better to have something like this in Composer where we can have proper images of each step and just general consistency from step to step. I can have the illustrations with the lighting changes as needed. I'm not reliant on the angle of my cell phone camera or anything like that. I'm just employing the actual SOLIDWORKS geometry to get a very good illustrative result. And then of course, these images can be fully embedded in a proper Word document later for a much better appearance. And when this design does update, I can resync step, step, step and get a current up-to-date output. SOLIDWORKS Composer comes with um, the Composer player as well. The Composer player. And again, this sort of 3D display and so forth can be enabled on any device that runs a Windows operating system. This does not require a software license um, and is freely distributable uh, within your firm or even to your customers for that matter. Even here with our, just the storyboard views we have here, again, we can tie together a little video of the assembly sequence with 
very little effort. Also, one advantage to all of this, by the way, is I can create bombs of very individual steps. Normally in SOLIDWORKS to get separate bombs for each step, I would have to have a specialty configuration of that step. Each time I do that, the overall performance of the assembly file goes down accordingly, right? Particularly for illustrative work, now I'm dealing with a separate file in its own application. All the artistic stuff I do here is totally independent and doesn't drag down the performance of the assembly for the engineering folks. Check the question board, no questions. So far, so good, everyone. I would assume if there's any questions, feel free to feel free to ask. What we can do is open up the microphones for everyone now. And if there are questions, you can go ahead and ask directly now at this point. Or if there's anything specific about Composer that you were looking to get information on uh, that hasn't uh, been covered yet, please let us know that as well. There are um, training classes offered for SOLIDWORKS Composer. The general class is a three-day class. We run that online or live in our training room. We also have, uh, for those that are interested and they want to try it first, there are test drives available. And we also have what's called an hands-on open lab, for which I have about a two hour practice session um, with examples and little tutorials and so forth, specifically on the Composer product, showing exactly how to use it to make a uh, product documentation set. Um, the case sample for that is actually a, a um, high level uh, remote control car. All right, we're clear, so we'll press on. I go back to my other one. Let's see if I get a video on this one. Here we've got bomb uh, of the individual steps. This is the overall bomb for this particular view. And we can set those um, in style here. We can make adjustments to all of this. This can also pull in the uh, custom file properties from the CAD geometry when those exist as well. You don't have to have the illustrators um, asking for technical information and so forth. The um, composer document can pull that from the CAD geometry when it's included. Each element here in the composer document has its own visual properties. We can adjust the colors and the background scenes and so forth. Everything in the composer document or environment, let's say, is considered to be, quote, an actor. Uh, even all the geometry pieces are actors of themselves. And it can be any sort of geometry at all. There are rendering scenes provided, there's background views. We can do all sorts of illustration type effects uh, with the Composer product. And that's all for the technical de presentation details. Are there any further questions? Speak now or forever hold your peace, I would say. You know, we're, we tried to go quick but slow at the same time in the interest of time. Um, you know, it sounds like everyone is pretty clear on questions at this point. 
And again, can you actually put my um, email in the in the chat in there? If you have any questions that come to mind after the fact, feel free to email them to me. It's C Costa, that's C C O S T A at solidexperience.com. John's putting it up in the chat right now. I know sometimes questions hit folks after the fact and you say, damn, I should have asked that before. But yeah, feel free, whether it's now or later on, to uh, ask anything that comes to mind. And is that all you got? That's all we have now. Again, we invite you to take advantage of either 